Hi guys, happy Tuesday. Today is our 135th day of learning in first grade. I hope you really enjoyed the story yesterday. And today I have a new story for you. So the story I'm going to read to you today is actually one that I have read to you before, which is perfect. You know, Miss Egan loves to reread stories. And the reason I love to do that is so that I can practice retelling the story, right? The more I read it, the more I hear, the more I listen, the more I understand what's going on in the story. And sometimes when you reread a story, you hear things that maybe you didn't hear the first time, or you understand a little bit better what the plot is or um, what the meaning of the story is. So the story, How Bat Got Its Wings, is what I'm gonna be reading to you. And after you're done listening to the story, I'm gonna ask you to um, sequence the events of the story for me. And when you are done with that, I'm gonna ask you to retell it to me on Seesaw. So first you're gonna practice sequencing the events, and once you are done and mastered that, you're gonna retell it to me, okay? All right, let's read our story. All right, how bat got its wings, retold and illustrated by Gerald McDermott. Now the reason it says retold, instead of um, the author or by, is because this story is a folk tale. Um, and a folk tale is a story that is based on traditions and these stories have been told um, by word of mouth or orally over time. So no one knows who the original author is. The, this is just a story that has been told over time and it's been passed down to generations. And each time a different um, author retells the story, um, sometimes they um, make their own illustrations. And um, maybe Gerald McDermott's purpose is that he really liked the meaning of this folktale. So when we're done, we're gonna see if we can figure out the plot right? The plot is the events that happen in the story. And the sequence is the order in which those events happen. So we want to figure out what the plot is. Then we want to be able to sequence those events. And once we have all that, we should understand what the meaning of this story is. And maybe we'll see why Gerald McDermott wanted to um, retell and illustrate this story. So um, our big question into why we're reading this is, how do animals' bodies help them? Well, if you think back way back in October when we did our bat study, we know all about bats, right? We know what bats look like. We know how their bodies work. Um, we know all about bats. So um, as we're reading this story, you may um, already recognize some things that other people don't. So let's read how bat got its wings. A long time ago, the animals had a big game of ball. They broke up into teams. One side had birds or animals with wings. The other side had animals with legs, but they did not have wings. Hmm. Well, so far, um, Gerald McDermott is doing a good job at making me want to read more. I want to find out how they're going to play this game and what they're going to do. Let's keep going. The animals who did not have wings were big and fast. They could toss a ball a long way and run like the wind. Well, we know the animals that did not have wings were able to probably hold the ball in their arms and throw it. Or maybe even the rabbit used his ears and they could run on their legs and they could run very fast. The birds were fast, but not as big. Yet with their wings, they could carry a ball way up in the air. The animals with legs could not jump up and grab it. So even though the birds were not as big as the other animals, they had an advantage, right? They could fly up high and carry the ball in their feet. Mm, this seems like a pretty even match, even though they're different. At last, game day came. The animals and birds met on the playing field. Both teams felt very excited. 
we will win, came the calls. And just then, an animal with four very little legs stepped up. It was a gray bat. He went to the animals. Well, now if you look, we can recognize him as a bat, even though right now he doesn't have what? That's right, he doesn't have his wings. But we, because we know all about a bat, we can recognize him as a bat. Why is he going to the animals team? Because he has legs and because he doesn't have wings, at least not yet. Can I play on this team? He asked. You are much too small to play, laughed the animals. And look at those little legs. We can't win with you. I may be little, said Gray Bat, but I can do lots of things. Now I'm gonna pause here for a minute. I want you to take a look. I can tell that Gray Bat is talking because I have these marks here, right? Everyone remember what those marks are called? Mark the whole thing. These marks are called quotation marks. And they show me that someone is the speaker and that there is dialogue going back and forth. I may be little, said Gray Bat. And if you look up here, you are much too small to play, laughed the animals. So here is one group of animals talking and here's Gray Bat talking. So those quotation marks remind me that there's dialogue going back and forth, that there is a speaker and that that's exactly what they said. So Gray Bat said, but I can do lots of things. Next, Gray Bat went to the birds. Can I play on this team? He asked. The birds shook their heads. Mm, our team has wings, they explained. But the animals say I am not big and I can't play with them. Hmm. Do you think the animals were being nice to Gray Bat, saying, you are much too small to play, ha <laughs> ha. That wasn't very nice. They weren't being respectful of him, right? They're worried about winning versus about being nice to Gray Bat. And even though the birds first said, well, our team has wings, hmm, they're trying to figure out a way to solve the problem. Then Blue Jay spoke up. Maybe there is a way for Gray Bat to play with us. Tell us about it, said Raven. We can give him wings, said Blue Jay. That is splendid, Cardinal exclaimed. Do you guys remember what splendid means? Splendid means something is wow, it's amazing. That is splendid, Cardinal exclaimed. So the birds took the skin off of the top of a big drum. Then they took the sticks and made special wings for Gray Bat. Now, I really like what Gerald McDermott did here because he's, um, he's retelling the story. So he's the one putting these words here. Um, and he's explaining to us exactly what they're doing. But look at the way he's illustrating also. They are taking the skin off of a big drum. Then they took the sticks and made special wings for bats. So they're using the sticks, right? You can see where the sticks are. And that this is the skin of the drum. So Gerald McDermott did a great job using the illustrations he made along with the words to really help us see and visualize how Bat is getting his wings. Let's see if he can fly, said Blue Jay. Gray Bat flapped his wings and he went zig and zag. He could not go in a line like a real bird. That's the best I can do, Gray Bat said and smiled. Just sit and wait until we need you. Well, we know that even though real bats have wings, they don't fly the same way that birds do because their wings are special, right? Their wings, they have their bones inside their wings and they're like fingers. So they can move in different ways. Let's see what happens in the big game. At last, the game began, and the animals and birds played their best to win. The ball zipped up and down, and Gray Bat just waited. Look at how Gray Bat is waiting. He's hanging upside down, right? We know that because we know all about bats. And do birds um, sit on branches like that? 
They do not. When the end of the game was close, each team had eight points. Gray Bat still had not played. With a little time left, the animals took the ball and ran with it. What do you think is going to happen? Is Gray Bat going to get into the game? Or are the birds going to say, it's too close to being done and we really want to win even though we want you on our team? What could we do? Just then, Gray Bat stood up. Let me help, he said. He flew up, up, up with his special wings. He grabbed the ball and carried it in his zigzag way. The animals could not catch him. We win, yelled the birds. Gray Bat did it. And to this day, Gray Bat plays on the bird team and he flies in his own way. And that is how Bat got its wings. What a nice folktale and what a nice story. Let's go back to the back cover. And here is um, our author, um, our reteller of this folktale, Gerald McDermott. And he says, animals, animals, animals. I love to draw them jumping and hopping and flying across the pages of my books. You can draw animals too. Gerald McDermott has illustrated folk tales starring interesting animals from all over the world. So if you think about our author yesterday, Rachel Mann, who um, loved animals and liked um, learning about them and finding interesting things about animals, are these stories the same? No, but both of these authors love animals and they love hearing interesting things and interesting stories about animals. And they were able to do it in different ways, which is really incredible. So there's so many ways to do the things that you love. Now, Gerald McDermott wanted to retell an old folk tale. And we know that folk tales um, are stories based on traditions or people or places and that um, the characters in this story are often um, animals that talk or act like people. So th as this is a folk tale, um, this is a folk tale of fiction, right? The folk tales are things that could not happen in real life, but they have a purpose to give us a, some sort of a meaning. So if you think about what happened in this story, let's go back to the beginning. We're gonna um, talk about the plot and we're gonna sequence those events and see if we can figure out the meaning of why the original creator of this story, the original creator of this folktale made this story and why it's been passed down over generations and being retold and being retold by authors now as because it has a great meaning to it. So if you think about the beginning of this story, we know that the animals wanted to have a game of ball and they split up into two teams, right? First it was the animals with the legs, the big animals with legs and the birds that had wings and they try to get together and they're going to play a game of ball. That's what happens first. Next, Bat comes along and he doesn't know what team to play on. And the animals say, no, you can't play with us. You're much too small and you, your legs are tiny and you, you won't help us win. So they weren't very nice. So then Gray Bat went to the birds and he said, I know I don't have wings, but can I play on your team? And the bird said, hmm, how can we do this? So then what do the birds do? The birds help Bat and they make him wings. And last but not least, when Gray Bat has his wings, what happens? The birds and Gray Bat win the game. And the birds, do you think they're really happy that they helped Gray Bat make those wings? Absolutely. And the point of the story is that should the animals have been nice to Gray Bat and respected him because maybe he could have ended up helping their team win? We always want to remember to always show people respect and to always be kind because that's what God and Jesus want us to do. And that's what we, we know in our hearts. So I hope you really enjoyed this story, guys. And um, I sent mom and dad the information of how you can sequence the events in this story. And then you're go after you cut and paste or write them in, you're then gonna tell it to me on um, Seesaw. 
All right, boys, I'll see you later for a nap. Bye.